In preclinical neurology lectures, you may have been taught about all kinds of different tracts that run within the spinal cord, and it can get quite overwhelming trying to remember exactly what the purposes of these tracts are and what their function is. In the context of clinical medicine, especially for the purposes of finals, you only really need to be familiar with uh, two or three different types of tract, and I'll go through each of them here. So here we have a cross-section of the spinal cord, and we have a few critical areas that are marked, and these are the only ones that you really need to know to be able to answer various exam questions. So in various shades of blue are the sensory pathways, and in red are the motor pathways. So obviously they are represented bilaterally, but just to try and keep things simple, I've put all the sensory stuff on the right-hand side of this image, and the motor stuff on the left-hand side. So remember that with the spinal cord, the dark matter is right in the middle, and the white matter is on the outside, so it's sort of the inverse of what we get in the brain. And the dark matter consists of all of the cell bodies, so where various synapses form, whereas the white matter is just the tracts of the neurons. So at the back of the spinal cord, we have the dorsal columns, and these are responsible for fine touch, vibration, and proprioception. So they are ascending columns because they take information from various sensory receptors and transmit it up to the brain. We also have the spinothalamic tracts marked over there in dark blue, and they are responsible for pain and temperature sensation. We also have something called the spinocerebellar tract, which is responsible for conveying proprioceptive information up towards the cerebellum. For the purposes of exam questions, it's slightly uh, less important, so don't worry too much about that. Just keep an eye on where the dorsal columns and the spinothalamic tracts are. And then when it comes to motor pathways, we have the corticospinal tracts. So we have the anterior corticospinal tract at the front and the lateral corticospinal tract on the left-hand side. And these are responsible for voluntary motor control. So they are descending pathways because they transmit motor commands from the primary motor cortex down towards the muscles that actually produce the actions required. So we've spoken about the arrangement of the spinal cord. The next thing we need to try and piece together is the actual pathway that links up the brain to whichever peripheral organ or muscle is being innervated. So with fine touch vibration and proprioception, remember it's obviously an ascending pathway because it's transmitting information up towards the brain from the peripheral receptors. So we initially have the sensory receptors, perhaps in your skin or wherever, and then we have a first order neuron which goes in to the spinal cord and then goes straight up the dorsal columns on the ipsilateral side. And then within the medulla, it synapses with a second order neuron, which then crosses the midline and goes up towards the thalamus, where it finally synapses with a third order neuron, which carries that information up to the primary somatosensory cortex. So the pain and temperature pathway is quite different. So it begins with nociceptors, which are specialized receptors for pain uh, found within the skin and various other tissues. And the first order neuron travels to the substantia gelatinosa, which is within the gray matter of the spinal cord. And then at the level that that first order neuron has entered the spinal cord, it will synapse with a second order neuron, and then it will immediately cross the midline and then ascend up the spinothalamic tract and to the thalamus. So important point to remember is that the spinothalamic tract or the pain and temperature pathway crosses the midline at the level at which the neurons enter the spinal cord. And then from the thalamus, similar to the fine touch and vibration pathway, the third order neuron will transmit that information from the thalamus to the primary somatosensory cortex. So one thing I used to find quite confusing with medical school exams was when we were asked questions about things like cord compression or disc prolapse, and it was really hard to actually envisage what was going on within the spinal cord itself. So here I've tried to depict what it would look like if you're looking sort of front on at a vertical spinal cord. So you can see that the pain and sensory fibers will come in and then at the level of the spinal cord at which the first order neuron enters the spinal cord, it will synapse in the substantia gelatinosa, it will then cross the midline and then ascend up the spinothalamic tract. With fine touch and vibration sensation on the other hand, the first order neurons will enter the spinal cord and it will ascend within the ipsilateral dorsal columns and eventually synapse in the medulla.
So first of all, it's important to remember that sensory pathways go up, whereas motor pathways go down, because sensory pathways are obviously transmitting sensory information from the peripheries to the brain, whereas motor pathways are trying to actually action uh, some of the commands that we are sending from the primary motor cortex. So the motor pathways are actually a little bit simpler just because it only consists of two neurons. So we have the lower motor neurons which go from the anterior horn of the spinal cord to the muscle. And then we have upper motor neurons which go all the way from the primary motor cortex to the anterior horn where it synapses with the lower motor neuron. And upper motor neurons will decussate at the level of the medulla. So this is an important diagram to pay attention to because sometimes you will see questions talking about how someone has had um, some sort of metastatic cord compression and it's caused upper motor neurons in a certain distribution and then it's caused lower motor neuron signs in a couple of very specific places. And this diagram explains that quite well. So you can see here that at any given spinal level there will be lower motor neurons exiting the spine and then there will also be upper motor neurons that travel down further before they synapse with their respective lower motor neurons. So this is why it's important to remember that uh, cord pathology that happens uh, above the level of the cord equina will cause some upper motor neuron signs and lower motor neuron signs. Thank you.